Mr. Rogers. Oh. <laughs> you, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. There we go. Yeah. It is. It's Welcome so back to Faith Family United Church of Christ. Um, we're doing our Bible study and we are studies in Luke. Today we're on chapter 12, or excuse me, chapter 12. 11. Thank you, Jackie. We're in chapter 11, starting at verse 14, and we're going to hear about Beelzebub, or Beelzebub at some people. What's interesting is this, this name of Beelzebub, or Beelzebub, it isn't really in the Old Testament. It's, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a name that, that grew to um, um, uh, prominence around the time of Jesus. And we, we actually find this name in a lot of the Dead Sea Scrolls that they found. The, 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 the Valley of Qumran, the, the, all those different scrolls that they found. So that's, that's, that's interesting. That, that was an actual person. No, no, no. It no. wasn't a person. It was it was the devil, Satan. Oh, okay. But, but that's that's like uh, one of the first names that they gave that they gave oh. for this. Okay. The creature that we know as Satan today. Okay. So I thought that was interesting. Um, okay. So. Now he was casting out demons, of course that's Jesus, and he was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the one who had been mute spoke, and the crowd were, were amazed. Crowds were amazed. Um, once again, whenever, I, I notice in Luke that after Jesus does a miracle, it always says, the crowds were amazed. So, but some of them... He cast out, some of them said, he cast out by Beelzebul, the ruler of demons. Other, others, others, to test him, kept demanding from him a sign from heaven. But he knew what they were thinking and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself becomes a desert, and, and house falls on house. If Satan also see, see the name there, he, they said Beelzebul, and he comes back and he's Satan. So if Satan uh, also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. Now, if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do you keep your exorcist? Cast out demons. I cannot speak to them. Um, therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out the demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his castle, his property is safe. But when one stronger than him attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Interesting. My verse never even mentioned Beelzebub. What's it say? Since the demon gone, the man started talking to Blue Street, taking the crowd by complete surprise. But some from the crowd were cynical. Black magic, they said. Some devil trick he's pulling from up his sleeve. And then when you said Beelzebub, and later on it says devil. Okay. Let's see. The word, yeah, the Greek word is be, Beelzebul. Well, yeah. So they, they, the devil. See, that, that's one thing. When I was studying, when I was studying um, evil and Satan, there's, there's so many. It, and as, as time goes on, Satan becomes more bigger, more, you know, legendary, if you will. And yeah, and this idea that they, they inter, the names get interchanged. We get the devil. We get Satan, 
we get Beelzebub, we get Lucifer, we get, you know, all these names come out as time goes on. And um, the interesting thing from the Bible, the word Satan, which is Ha, which is Ha Satan, which they always put the Ha in front of um, nouns, the, and Satan means, um, uh, what's it mean, Cindy? Satan. Adversary. Thank you. It means adversary. One that tries to persecute or uh, bring uh, judgment upon someone else. And so, and if you read in, in Job, that's kind of what, you know, Hasatan, the Satan, goes to God and tries to get him to let him tempt and, and destroy uh, Job's faith in God and his love for God. <laughs> and he does all these terrible things to Job's and then or to Job's family and then to Job, but he was not allowed to take his life. That's what God said. You could do all these things, but don't take his life. And the whole time, you know, his wife starts like, Why don't you just curse God and die? You know, you're you're miserable. And he says, No, because God loves me. And in the end, God repays Job, uh, you know, everything that he lost times two. So you know, but but Satan, the Satan figure, is is someone that tries to um, tempt you into going against God. So he's an adversary of you or of God, and that's the big debate. And, and you see it in the Dead Sea Scrolls. You see it in a lot of scholarship. Was was the original Satan? Was he uh, an adversary of men trying to tempt them? into going against God, or is that it, it, that he's an adversary of God because um, he's trying to get people against God. So, our tradition says that he was against God, and that's why he was cast out of heaven, because he, he wanted to be God. So he's God's adversary. So he was an angel at one time? Yes, he was an angel. As a matter of fact, some places, um, it's, it's uh, he's He's um, pictured as doing God's work, you know, dirty work, <laughs> like like go smite these people, and, and, and he's the the lead angel that does things like that. So. Anyway, interesting thing about Satan in here, of course, and Cindy's translation says devil, and in uh, the original Greek is Beelzebul. Um, so people do not. Um, yeah, I, I thought that was funny. And you, and what do you think about this right here? <laughs> you remember we said, um, oh, let me get back to the other. There we go. Um, we said that um, after a miracle, the crowds were amazed. Mm -hmm. And then they turned right around, and now they're questioning what they were amazed about, you know? Isn't that interesting? Well, sometimes you can't believe what you see. Sometimes you can't believe what you see. They, they treated him like a charlatan. Yeah. Well, imagine somebody wasn't speaking, and then all of a sudden they could speak. They do that now, and you're like, mm, that's not right. So there's probably the same kind of reaction. You can't always believe. Unless you know that person, and you've known them their whole life, they couldn't speak, then you're like... like a lot of people think they, they go to those ten revivals, and the, the Pentecostal preacher heals people. They're like, oh, that was a plan. I think that person could walk, or that person could talk a lot. Yeah, also, I think it's easier to believe the bad about someone than to believe oh, yeah. the good. And, and why is that, do you think? Because people compare themselves and they think, and I can't do that, so he can't do that. Or, or, or I might be shady like that if I had his platform or her platform, and I would do the same thing, knowing that I, I'm capable of doing bad things like that person. And I think I think that's an important thing, not not pointing it at someone else, but seeing someone doing something wrong and saying to ourselves, if the situation was right, I might be, do the same thing, and that just being honest with ourselves and, and being able to, to admit that we're capable of sin. I think when we get past that, oh, how could they do that? I could never do something like that. They're an evil person. They're, and when we deny that we could do it, but deep down in, 
given the same situation, put in their shoes for their lifetime, you might be enjoying the same thing and understanding that, that we're all one. That's important. Is that what you were trying to say, Sam? No, I just think sometimes it's easier to believe the bad in people than to recognize that they're doing something good that you can't do. I think it's a human nature thing. But yeah. I love the if then statement in, in chapter in verse 19. Now if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, then who do you cast out demons? You're, you're, how do your exorcists cast out demons? That's interesting. If then, if I do this, then what happens when you do it? Is it the same thing? And well, then, this one says, this is interesting. He says, if Satan Satan cancels Satan, is there any Satan left? <laughs> you accuse me of ganging up with the devil to cast out demons, but if you're slinging devil mud at me, calling me a devil who kicks out devils, doesn't the same mud stick to your own exorcist? Interesting. <laughs> I like that. I like that dirty slang. <laughs> mud slinging. So, if Jesus casts out Jesus, if Jesus casts out demons. By God, then the kingdom has come near you. So, but if God's finger, I'm, if, but if it's God's finger I'm pointing that sends the demons on their way, then God's kingdom is here for sure. I think I think there's a, there's a little bit more to that. Um, do you see the uh, um, the kingdom in our in our translation it says, God has come to you. The kingdom of God has come to you. In other words, the kingdom's right here before your eyes. He was telling them who he was. Exactly. He was the bringer of the kingdom. And what was, what is the kingdom? Is it, we always think of it as a, uh, a manifestation of, of this power and this, you know, all these people are going to gather together and we're going to have power and we're going to show the world. Because that's what a kingdom is, right? Yeah. No, it's helping others to leave. Yeah, but he says, he says, mm -hmm. no, it's like what I'm doing. It's about compassion. It's about love for everybody. Kingdom. Kingdom, exactly. But we're all equal, and we all take care of each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought that was interesting. Okay, so where are we at? Kind of goes on to talking about a strong man being overpowered by a stronger man. Exactly. But then it's really interesting because it says, this is war. There is no neutral ground. If you're not on my side, you're the enemy. If you're not helping, you're making things worse. But sometimes that's a hard thing for people to hear because we hear Jesus talking about love your neighbor, love your neighbor, no matter what, turn the other cheek, turn the other cheek. And this is saying something very different. Well, if you're not with me, you're against me. Uh -huh. This is different than what we've heard before, remember? Yeah. So this is something that people use. They go, they take this one verse out of context and they basically say, if you're not Christian, you're the enemy. If you're not a follower of Christ, if you're not with us, you're, you're the enemy. If you're not with us, you're the enemy, exactly. But that's not really what he's saying here. What's he saying? He's saying this war on evil and perversiveness, you can't be on the side of evil. You can't be on the side of not loving your neighbors. You can't be on the side of hurting people. You can't be on the side of the mass accumulation of wealth at the, at the a detriment of people starving to death. If there's, only, there's only the right side to be on in certain things. Notice what he says about about the straw, the the, the man guarding his house. Mm -hmm. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his castle, his property is <coughs> safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and over powers him. See that? That's that's a lot of what I tried to say last week. 
uh, in my sermon and, and before we had that um, video we watched. It's this transfer of power, you know? This person's strong. Look at me. I can defend myself. I can take care of myself. Really? I've got, I'm bigger than you. I've been to the gym and I'm bulked up and I've got better weapons and I come and attack you. Now I'm in power. So this guy goes, he goes to the gym, and he gets better weapons, and then, and then he attacks him. And then this guy decides he's going to go and get a bunch of people together. And they come, and, they, and the power just goes back and forth. And people are divided because of this. And, um, and it's, it, it's interesting with that. But Jesus goes on and says, whoever is not with me is against me. Now, he just got done talking, saying the kingdom is near. It's, it's in front of you. And this isn't the kingdom, this back and forth of power. Because one of these times, you're going to be overpowered, no matter how powerful you think you are. It's the old adage thing about dying to self. You have to, you know, it's about selfishness. Like I said, there's some things you have, there's no right, there's no way you can be on the wrong side of something. And you really have to look at the world through a lens of not being selfish, which is so hard to do, even if you think you're being selfless. Yeah. But you're probably still... Think of, think of, think of here, Jesus is teaching, I don't want to say a new teaching, but Jesus, his teaching was that, that, that other rabbis were teaching the kind of the same thing that Jesus was teaching. Kind of. But I think he went a lot farther. And so... The power, the people that taught the taught the people, the teachers of the law, and the 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 the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the the priests, all of them are against Jesus because they have power, and they can wield that power. And Jesus says, you know, it's not it's not about the power; it's about taking care of. That's the kingdom. And what you have is not the kingdom, and that's and this is all in um, in response to them claiming that he was the one that was evil. Mm -hmm. Whoever <laughs> is not with me is against me, and whoever's not whoever does not gather scatters in other words you guys are trying to divide people where I'm trying to gather people together your kingdom is about power my kingdom is about love and compassion for all the people that's a pretty condemnation of the current state of Christianity in America mm -hmm. because they look to divide yeah that's a, hard, that's a hard thing for people to hear and it, what's, what's, reflect on. It was interesting. If you go back, um, that's what happened um, to the Catholic Church. They, they wanted to excommunicate people. You don't think like me. You don't act like me. You don't look like me. You know, then, and you don't do what I tell you to do. Then I'm going to kick you out. That's going to divide you. And that's where the Reformation comes in. All the ref reformers were excommunicated, you know. Zwingli, uh, Martin uh, Calvin, Luther. Uh, Martin oh. Luther, they were all excommunicated because they didn't think and do what they were told to do. And so um, in, in Christianity today, how many times do you hear, well, they're not real Christians, you know? Um, how many times do you hear something so horrible as... Hate the sin, love the sinner. But they use that to other people. Other, yes, that's a good word. And a lot of times the things they're pointing fingers at aren't really sin. Mm -hmm. It's just difference. Difference. Something they consider immoral or, or unchrist like. But again, they're not the they're the ones. They're not they're not looking at this this lens that Jesus gave us here. They are making things worse. They're not making things better. 
I wanted to say one more thing, and we'll move on to this last little bit um, in the, um, the, the return of the unclean spirit. Um, like Cindy said, in the church, in the church in America today, Christianity in America today, there's this idea that that if you don't if you don't agree with me, then you're because I read the Bible, you're I know off. the Bible, yeah, exactly. And um, um, what was I going to say? If you don't agree with me, you're going to be out. Um, and Cindy and I. Because we, being in, in the chapel and we're in the military, I see um, all the Protestant church, uh, country, you know, people came together and we made a lot of friends. And now that we're not Protestants, but we're, you know, we're, we're a um, um, we're progressive. Progressive, thank you. Not to say liberal, but progressives. I, I like that word a lot. Better. So we're progressive Christians. In other words, we think for ourselves and we. we we see that love is the answer, whereas all the people that we left behind, they're like, no, you got to do this, 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 obey, obey, obey. And the problem is, that's their, understand, that's their sin. And then they want to put barriers so that they don't get to their sin. But now those barriers that they put so they don't get to the sin, they push on you. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so we've been called the uh, not true Christians <laughs> by our friends. It's 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 difficult. Badge of honor. Yeah, it, it unfortunately it, it but it hurts because it does. those are your friends and, and they they they're um, I won't say stuck but they're in their ways and they can't see out of them like oh, like tough. we have. Well, they're stuck. They're stuck in a system that doesn't allow them to question. And that, and that's where the, that's where I always say the church is, has succumbed to the world and the fact that it's, it's about power and corruption or power and control. The only problem is power corrupts. And, and so, anyway. So that's what I was going to say about that. Okay, so the last part here is Jesus, the, the return of the unclean spirit. I thought this was so interesting. And this, this affected me so much when I first became a Christian. Uh, when an unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it wanders through the waterless region looking for a resting place. But not finding it, it says, I will return to the house from which I came. When it comes, it finds it swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and live there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. I've so, often yeah. heard this compared to like addiction. Mm -hmm. Anybody can stop doing something, but to stay stopped, you mm -hmm. know, it's like if normally if you stop without having any program in place or any plan in place, when the addiction comes back, it's ten times worse, and it's a cycle that people have. That's why addiction is so hard to break because. It's hard, mm -hmm. but that's why I've often heard this really compared to addiction, smoking, any kind of thing that people struggle with. That, that's, that if you don't, anybody can stop doing something, but staying stopped. Like my mother was a heavy smoker, and she was like, "Okay, today's the last day I'm going to smoke." And then three days later, you know, it was like, you know, um, you can't stay stopped. Yeah, so it, it's, it's like a person could be just walking their dog nonchalantly, and somehow person offered them a cigarette. Why? That, not that, and that, they, and not that, that they knew they were smokers in the past, but right. somehow it happens to be in their way. Mm -hmm. Or if it's whatever the other, it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, right. but mm -hmm. it's like somehow these things always happen and you got to figure out a way to get, get above it. Right. And, and, and not, only, not only that, but you can't, just, like, like the Cindy was saying, and the scripture is saying, you, you, you don't want to just cut it out. Okay, I, I quit. I quit drinking soda. Um, I'm not addicted to cherry Coke right, Zero, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but but if I stop, what happens? Eventually, I'm going to need something to drink, 
to be a switch to something else. Exactly. You have to replace, like Cindy was saying, people that quit smoking, what do they try, try to tell them to do? Well, get like a carrot stick or, or something Change like that. Eat, eat something. Because it, it takes care of your hands and the, 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 the fact that you're putting something in your mouth. The behavior. So, and and uh, dr you know being on the, being on the psych and and, and uh, addiction ward, um, that's what some of the doctors, the psychiatrists, they didn't mind their their um, patients smoking because they were leaving behind heavy drugs, and so they use they they then they become addicted to cigarettes, but they but they had something different that wasn't as bad. And, and so here the spirit leaves you and it comes back and you don't have anything in place and now it's going to be worse. And I think that that's a really, really good analogy that it's, it's about, it, it it's really looks, we can look hard at addictions. Well, it's not just addictions. People get caught doing something wrong. Say you're a televangelist and you get caught having extramarital affairs like that never happens but they always are like oh I'm not going to do that anymore God's healed me from that and then you know five years down the road it's not just addiction it's also about behaviors uh -huh. that are harmful if you don't address why you do that it's a power thing or whatever the case may be it, you know it's different for everyone but if you don't address why you're doing that behavior it's the same kind of thing where you they just never stop. It's the same thing with abusers and, you know, people who are abusive. I'm never going to do that again. I, that was a one-time thing. And then, you know, you know, women stay in relationships and they continue to be abused because of this kind of thing. It's like, it's, it, you can't do it alone. You yeah. have to have a system in place. You have to have people. You have to have faith. You have to have prayer. You have to have meditation. You have to have discipline. It's a whole package deal. So when you when you look at this and you say, oh, it's about a spirit, it's about demons. No, it's not about demons. It's about human behavior, whatever that case may be, if it, whatever you struggle with, everybody struggles with something. Um, and I think there's a lot, you know, it's a really important message. You could preach a whole sermon on just on those few verses because it's, you know, Jesus is saying we need each other. We need community. That's, that's, that's good. We yeah. need fellowship. We need, we need accountability as well. People holding us accountable, even when it's hard to hear. So it's like, it's like, though this Jesus was laying out the kingdom living for us. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, this passage is often so just used to talk about demons. And I don't think it has anything to do with yeah, demons. Yeah, I don't. I think, I, well, I think a lot of times we, we over, um, spiritualize, I'll use spiritualize, I want to use mysticize or, or fantasize, that this idea of, of demons and and uh, spirits, you know, this this whole, uh, what's his name, Peretti, um, yeah. this present darkness, he writes these books about, we can't see them, but there's demons battling right now against angels that are trying to keep us pure, we just can't see them, they're in this room, and anyway, we, we over fantasize this idea when we talk about spirit spirit is our actions what we're doing what we're in the mood to do you know and that, that I think that's a lot you know to do with spirits and like Cindy was saying this isn't necessarily talking about spirits it's talking about our nature when, we, when we're doing something we know is wrong that bad spirit we send it away and we clean our house right I, I, I just picture this like room in the in the attic that's been used by the demon or you know by all these bad thoughts that you've had or these actions that you know and now it's empty completely empty you cleaned it out the demon's gone all his garbage is gone you know you threw him out he was a terrible tenant and uh, but you don't use that space that space is laying and like like Cindy had said that would be a great place to bring all your friends in and party with your friends or have, have Bible studies with your friends or, or whatever and instead you just leave it open and it's just inviting you and then he then he sneaks in the window and he's got you got a squatter up there now and he invites all his other squatter friends in. <laughs> but, well, I, but, I, but 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 I hope you can picture because I, I can mm -hmm. picture this whole thing and uh, 
but but the point is that that we need to use that once we clean that out we need to use it for good yeah. and uh, I was going to tell say the, the psychological um, or the, the physiological um, when we do something enough we have set our uh, neural pathways to do that and anything can trigger oh we're doing that now oh we're doing that now you know smoking um, alcohol I had I had a, a, a work paint that when I worked construction um, on the road um, we, we roomed together and he would not eat bread he was an alcoholic just the smell of the yeast made him want to eat it really? and so what he would he would eat onion bagels the onions would over you know <laughs> power the smell or the taste of the, the the yeast and but but he used bagels because well not not the, the, the yeast you know okay anyway I, but but that that's you have to change that neural pathway but you got to let that neural pathway die by doing something else and that's the, the idea we have to do something else in place of what we used to do this is another way where this current brand of Christianity is toxic in that they teach you that all you need is Jesus you know you can have this this really horrible life and you ask Jesus into your heart and you're saved right saved but if you don't it's like your kid when they get away with something then the next time they push it a little far now I can get away with that now I can get away with this and that's how Christians in America have grown up thinking, oh, if nobody knows about it, I got away with it. Nobody caught, I get caught, I got away with it. And they never internalize their stuff and work on it because they're forgiven. I'm going to heaven now. What what else do I have to worry about? Making sure my family goes to heaven and gets baptized. And, th and that that isn't uh, what I always say is is yes, your 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 salvation. Is between you and God. It's individual, but your Christianity is with everyone. So and, we're and not, your Christianity is kingdom living, right? So if you're not if you're not looking at your behaviors and how they impact other people negatively or positively or whatever, and working on your internal things in your head, then you are not actually saved because you're not saved from yourself. Yeah. Making yourself and the world better is being saved. Not, my soul is is with Christ now, and I can continue this life where I don't ever have any accountability for my actions. Yeah. And that's particularly toxic about evangelicalism and the fact that that's how they were so that's how they're so consumed with popularism because they feel like, oh, I'm saved. I don't have to work on myself. I can be. I can have these thoughts of, show, I'm trying not to go political, but I can have chauvinistic thought ideals, and I can be anti-LGBTQ, and I can be, um, you know, racist. Because I, if I'm, because because I'm wrong. The I'm church saying. is, the church isn't, I mean, there's no consequence for it in there. So, so that's why this is particularly toxic and ripe for fundamentalism. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off, but it's like yeah. this kind of verse right here is very important for us to think about when we are on our personal walk with Christ. So, okay, I'll stop. Anybody else got anything? <laughs> Pop it off. Okay. So next week, um, next week we're going to get into true blindness. Uh -oh. True blindness and the sign of Jonah. Thanks, everybody.